nominate five people and encourage people to give either 10 pounds, $10, or 10 times 10 Rand to watch me skipping. So here it goes. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome once again to King's Church Little Eva online for our Sunday morning celebration, our Sunday morning time when we come together to worship God. Now, during the course of a day or during the course of a week, we can face all kinds of situations, situations that come our way, or situations that we hear about. Some of it can be quite uplifting and good. Um, I got a message on Friday from some friends in the church that shared some really good news with us that um, will help them in coming years and will have great effect upon their life and their lifestyle. And that was so good to hear, that news. However, there can be stuff that comes our way or we hear of that can be disappointing and even devastating. And this week I've had a couple of situations that have come my way that have been really quite tough to handle. And um, I think it's fair to say that in my Christian life and uh, in my speaking and preaching, uh, I've placed quite a, an emphasis on Jesus, the Son of God. However, bearing in mind some of the, the stuff that's been going on this last week, I've been reminded of the fact of Jesus, the Son of Man. Jesus, the Man. And um, Jesus, the Man, who was... Um, with crowds of folks and yet at the end of the day needed to withdraw and needed some space for himself and space to spend with his father. Jesus the man who after a long journey was weary and worn and tired and needed that sleep. Jesus the man who wept at his mate Lazarus's grave he was there at the graveside and he wept at that grave. Jesus the man who was angry in the temple and who turned the, the tables over in the temple. He was furious. He was angry. Jesus the man who in the Garden of Gethsemane went through real anguish and pain and said to Father God, Father, if it's your will, take this cup from me, this cup of suffering. However, nevertheless, if it's your will, let your will be done. And what comes home to me is that Jesus the man went through all the trials and the complexities of life, just as you and I do. But the great thing is that he understands. He understands all that we go through. And he not only understands, but he stands with us in all that we go through. Jesus, the Son of Man. Jesus, the Son of God. Jesus, our High Priest. And as we Enter into worship, I just want to remind you of this scripture in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14 onwards. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has gone through the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathise with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted <clears throat> in every way, just as we have, 
yet without sin. Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may find mercy and find grace to help us in time of need. Are you going to pray, Dave? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, Lord Jesus, we just want to thank you uh, this morning that as we uh, are together, as we are one, as we watch this together, Lord, we just want to thank you, Lord, that your affections for us don't change. Lord, we thank you that as the Son of Man, you experienced uh, every emotion mm. we could imagine. Lord, that you can um, you can relate to what we're going through. Lord, you have compassion towards us. Lord, that you um, have experienced what we experience. And Lord, we just take great comfort in that this mm. morning. Yes, Lord. Lord, we take great comfort in the fact that you have experienced what it means to be human the great joy and the great pains and Lord wherever we come this morning whether it's with great joy or great pain or anything in between Lord this morning we're able to approach you yeah Lord that you draw near to us and Lord we pray that as we sing this morning as we come into a time of worship wherever we've been this week whatever situations we face we pray right now Lord that we would just um, experience your mercy and your goodness and Lord we pray that you we would um just fix our eyes on you during this time. Mm. Amen. Amen.
like the candle to the sun. Unfailing Father, compares to His great love. Behold.
Yeah, God is, is here with us, isn't he? Wherever you find yourself this morning, whether it be on your couch or at home or wherever you're watching this, God is with you and uh, he's amongst us. And uh, that's the incredible truth, isn't it? We don't need to, uh, he's not kept up in a building called church, but he is uh, amongst his people and he is all over the earth. And uh, that's a great comfort to us. And this morning we get an opportunity to pray and um, what we want to do this morning is we've got four things we feel like it'd be good to pray about and we're going to share them and then we're going to just have uh, a, a bit of silence and we want wherever you are to yeah. pray about those things and uh, if you're on your own you might just want to pick one of those areas and pray about it if there's a few of you you could pray about different ones together um, but we just really want this to be a time where we participate together and we uh, we pray about these issues together so the first one of those that we want to pray about is um, obviously some people went back to school Thursday, Friday this week. Lots are going back at the beginning of this week, coming, so tomorrow and Tuesday. Um, and we want to pray for teachers, we want to pray for the children, we want to pray for parents of people that have, have got children. You know, whether a child is five or a child is 18, there has been uh, that you know as they go back to school and they go back to college there's been so much disruption and we want to pray for patience for for them we want to pray for patience for their families and for their teachers we want to pray for strength you know this is really is a, a difficult time you know six months away from kind of education in that manner six weeks six months away from seeing friends it's going to be a very difficult time for people and we just want to really lift those people up so that's teachers and students going back and the families of those people. We also want to pray for um, those whose jobs are at risk at this time and for those who may have the, who's have that possibility of uh, maybe losing the jobs and the effect that this will have upon families and family life. And so we want to pray for those whose employment might be at risk at this time and all the uncertainties and the hardship that that can bring to people yeah absolutely and the third thing we we'd like to pray about this morning is we'd like to pray for those people that are suffering uh, with sickness or illness this can be a, a whole range of things and john obviously puts together a, a really good list that he sends around each night uh, so it might be a time to get that out if you're um, not aware of who's not, not well. Or it could just be that you know somebody who's not well. And we want to give you the space this morning to, to lift up those people in this time. And finally, we want to pray for those who have lost loved ones during this period. And uh, we want to pray that they just may know the strength and the power of the love of Christ at this time. Bearing in mind that uh, the psalmist tells us that the Lord is close to the broken hearted. Brilliant, so why don't we, wherever you are, just want to encourage you now, why don't we, uh, we'll put those things on the screen and we just want to encourage you to spend this time praying, uh, to lift up your requests and make them known to God in these areas.
Yeah, Lord, we just want to lift up uh, all of those people in, who are going back to school, all of those teachers and students and the families of those people. We pray for those who've been sick. We pray for those who've lost loved ones. And Lord, we lift up the prayers for those people that are working and are worried about losing their job and those that have lost their jobs. Mm. And God, we just lift up each prayer that has been prayed across our church right now. And Lord, we just, as one, we want to declare that we agree. Yes, and Lord, Lord, so we say together, Amen. Yeah. Amen. And so, um, as we've prayed together, we, we're going to continue our time of worship. And as we continue our time of worship, what we're going to do this morning is we're going to hear um, a mum speak. And so, um, my dad's going to pray for in a minute, but I just want to encourage us, wherever we are, to get ourselves into uh, a position where we can receive. Um, I just wonder how prepared you are this morning. I know so many weeks when we've, we sit together and we watch and we, uh, we gather and we kind of do church together. It's so different, isn't it, being at home than it would be at being at church. Maybe it's suddenly there's more distractions around and you think, oh, I've got to check the meat or I've got to, you know, oh, the phone's rang or I'll go and make a brew or, oh, I've pulled the washing in because it's raining. But in these next few minutes, I just want to encourage us to, to really kind of try to shut off a lot of that stuff and to really focus in on what uh, God would speak to us through my mum right now. And so uh, why don't we prepare ourselves and, and dad's going to pray for, for my mum. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for your precious word. We thank you, Lord, that it encourages us, it uh, inspires us, yeah. it corrects us, it, open, it opens our eyes because your word is the truth. And we pray this morning for Jessica as she delivers your word to us that, Lord, uh, we will be ready to hear yeah. just what you have to say to us through Jessica and through your word this morning. Lord Jesus, give us hearts that are attentive to you this morning and just speak to us by the power of your word through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, here we are in the ninth month of 2020, a year like no other. So much has been taken from us. So much of where we are is unknown. And so much about the future is uncertain. And I've heard people say, oh, 2020, let's just write it off. And anyone who knows me will know that I am a natural worrier. And in fact, my family call me a panicker. And things can really pull at me and um, I can really struggle with. And on a family front, um, obviously there's members of my family who work in schools and this week and next week they're going back to schools to work and there's all the challenge of that. Our grandson Reuben starts nursery and obviously, you know, will he, will he settle, will he be okay? David and Alex's wedding plans have been hijacked and they look to planning for next year. As a church, it feels disconnected. Zoom and online is great, but I think we're all just longing to meet together, to sing and just to see each other and encourage one another. And of course, give that big hug. And yet in spite of all of this, I can't get away from the fact that God clearly said at the end of 2019 and the beginning of this year, he said, new beginnings. And Isaiah 43 verse 18 and 19 says, forget the former things. Don't dwell on the past. See, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up, don't you perceive it? I am making streams in the wasteland. And so, as I've said before, I believe in this season, it's so important that we really see what God is doing and what God wants to do with us individually and as a church. And time and time again, I just find myself throwing myself back on God saying, Lord, what are you saying? What is it you're doing? What is it you're asking of me? And one of the things that God keeps saying to me 
and I believe he's saying to us as a church and wants to say to you too, is are you prepared to stand in the gap? So this morning, I want us to think about standing in the gap. The phrase comes from Ezekiel. In the book of Ezekiel, chapter 22, verse 30, it says this. God says this. I looked for a man among them who would build up the wall and stand before me in the gap on behalf of the land so I would not have to destroy it, but I found none. You see, in this passage, in Ezekiel, the Lord said to Ezekiel the prophet, he wanted to deliver a message through Ezekiel to Judah and Jerusalem. And the Lord was looking for a man to stand in the gap. And it gives a picture of a wall, of a wall with a hole in or a gap in the middle of it. And if the gap wasn't repaired, if the gap wasn't built up again, the city would fall. Now, the gap in the passage of Ezekiel is referring to the dangers that were facing Jerusalem. And God's anger was about to break through in judgment on this city. And God's saying, is there nobody in this city who's prepared to stand on my behalf and intercede for the city and seek God's mercy? And God searched for somebody and he couldn't find one. And it seems that if there had been one person who would be stood in that gap, God would have been willing to avoid the destruction of Jerusalem. If you look at castles and ancient ruins, so often when they built castles, they have gaps, but in the gap around the wall, it wasn't so that the enemy could get in. They had soldiers standing in the gap, ready to defend. One of the things that my grandchildren love to do, and I have to say, I think the adults love as well, is when they go to the seaside, they love to build a massive sand castle. Now the castle has to be built high, but it has to have strong walls. And to make the walls strong, the sand has to be impacted and packed really hard together so there's no gaps, so that it can't crumble. Because any gap in the sand causes a weakness, causes a collapse. And so in the passage, yes, God went looking for someone to pray and stand in the gap for sinful Jerusalem. But I believe that God is looking for men and women today to stand in the gap. To stand in the gap in prayer and to stand in the gap practically for others. There are many people in the Bible who stood in the gap. And we haven't time to look at them all, but there's loads. If you start to look at it, there are so many. Nehemiah, more than 100 years after Jerusalem had fallen to the Babylonians and the city was in ruins, he went to the king and said, please can I return to the land and rebuild the wall? Esther, the queen of Persia, she was in, in a similar culture as I was today, a culture that was led by power, pleasure, possessions, and Esther was also a Jew. And yet Haman, who was the second most powerful man in the kingdom, had set out this plan to annihilate, to extinguish nine million Jews in the kingdom. And Esther didn't take her position lightly. And she called the Jewish people to pray and fast for three days. And then she stood in the gap on behalf of her people and went to the king, risking her life but standing in the gap. And the result was that God intervened and the, the king changed his mind and Haman was put to death instead. The greatest one to ever stand in the gap was Jesus Christ. You think about it, God created you and me for relationship. And yet through all our disobedience, through all our wrongdoing, through us wanting our own way, we caused a massive gap. And no matter how much we try, we can't bridge that gap. So what did God do? He sent his only son to come as a man, to die, to bridge that gap from all our wrongdoing so that we could have that relationship. And then 
He raised his son from the dead to bridge that gap that we could have that life, that true life, that true relationship with him. And you know, God is still looking for men and women to stand in the gap. Men and women who are prepared to pray and to be practical. In the passage in Ezekiel, it says, God says, I looked for someone. Could that someone be you or me? So when God says, I'm looking for someone to stand in the gap, what is the gap? Well, the gap can be anything. I've said that on a family front, there are things that are, there are so many changes and so many, there could be so many worries where I can stand in the gap for my family. The gap can be vulnerability. It could be sickness. It could be danger. It could be fear of something. The gap can be a social problem. It can be human trafficking. It could be racism. The gap could be a very personal issue. It could be a prodigal child who seems far from God. It could be someone who's had been betrayed. But God is looking for men and women who aren't the finished article, but are ready to say, yes, Lord, I'll stand in the gap. How do we stand in that gap? Well, the other week when we heard from Chris from Salford, he reminded us of Paul, who Paul, when he wrote to the Philippian church, was on his own lockdown. He was locked down in prison. And yet I think it's amazing that in the middle of his lockdown, what does he say? He prays in Philippians 1. He says, I thank God every time I remember you. In all of my prayers for all of you, I thank God. And I always pray with joy for you. And he says, he goes on to say, and I'm confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. In other words, he could have been thinking about himself, but rather than thinking about himself, he was praying for others that they wouldn't give up, but that God would, they would carry on and God would continue and complete that work in them. And so God is looking for people to pray for others. And we need to be praying and standing in the gap for each other at this time because it's tough. So I want to ask, who are you standing in the gap for? Galatians 6 verse 2 says, carry each other's burdens. We can also pray for those who don't yet know Jesus. Paul went on in 1 Timothy 2 and he said, it's good and pleasing for prayer and supplication. He said, first of all, I urge that prayers, intercession and thanksgiving be made for all people. This is good and it's pleasing in the sight of God who desires all people to be saved and to come to know him, to know the knowledge of the truth. Never underestimate the power of your prayer. Sometimes when we're standing in the gap, we can feel like, oh, I don't know whether God's hearing my prayers. But you know, God hears every one of your prayers and my prayers. Many of you will know my story, but part of my story is that my father was Jewish and my mum and dad had been married 18 years. So I guess when I came along, I was a surprise. But their oldest friends whom they'd met in the war were Christians. And from the day that I was born, my Auntie Mary and Uncle Harry, along with the whole of their church in Sussex, committed to pray daily for me that I would come to know Jesus. And you know, that was the best prayer that anyone could have prayed for me because at nearly the age of four, nearly 14, I received Jesus. But what a thrill for them that must have been. So I want to encourage you, stand in the gap and keep standing in the gap for those that don't yet know him. Stand in the gap for each other, stand in the gap for those that don't yet know him, and are others standing in the gap for you and for me? Paul, the man who, who was praying in the gap when he was locked down, but also wrote to the Ephesian church and he said, pray also for me, that when I speak, words may be given so that I will fearless, 
fearlessly made known the mystery of the gospel for which I'm an ambassador in chains. Paul said, pray for me. Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane asked his disciples to pray. The Greek word for struggle in prayer means to partner and assistant together, to labour together, to endeavour together. So I just want to encourage you, don't be too proud to think that you can't ask for prayer. There is no shame in asking for prayer. If Jesus asked for his disciples to pray, then you and I need to ask people to pray for us and stand with us. And as we stand in the gap, yes, it definitely involves prayer, but I believe standing in the gap costs everything. I was reading about a pastor in Chicago and he's written a book and it's called In the Gap. What happens when God's people stand strong? And him and his wife were building a home and his friend said, oh, don't build it in downtown Chicago. Build it in a nice suburb where it's safe. But he was convinced that God had told him to serve and live in the community where God had placed him. So he built a home right in the middle of downtown Chicago. And while he's been there, he's been robbed, he's received death threats, but he knows that that's what I got, where God has placed him. And we see that time and time again. On our own doorstep, we look at urban outreach and they're standing in the gap for the poor. Care and share. There's a cost to deliver parcels, to build with people. We heard from Lynn Swart last week. She's standing in the gap for New Day United, standing in the gap for those people in South Africa. And God is looking for people who like the boy with the five loaves and two fish. And it doesn't look much. But he said, well, this is my lunch. You can have my lunch. Because when we think our offering is poor and we put it in the hands of the Saviour, he does the miraculous. The boy gave all that he had. And God used it. Personally, if you'd have said to me six months ago that we would be doing church online, I would never have believed this. We had not seen this coming. And if I'm being totally honest, it's not easy. And for me personally, it's like one of my worst nightmares. It's to do something in front of a camera, to talk to an empty room, and then to watch it back it's really hard. It doesn't feel, it's not comfortable. It brings up all kinds of, of challenges. And yet, you know, God keeps showing me again and again. It's not about me. It's about him. And we can feel inadequate. But, and we can think, well, what difference can I make? But it's not, that's not the point. Because when God calls us to do something, he always equips us. And when he calls us to stand in the gap and whatever he calls us to do, whether it be pray or whether it's pray and serve or whatever, he will meet us there and then. Standing in the gap. We can stand for others. We can stand for those who don't yet know Jesus. We need others to stand with us. Standing in the gap will cost us everything. But finally, I just want to say this. Standing in the gap when God tells us to stand there, will bring answers. One of the verses that I've not been able to get away from through this season is 2 Chronicles 7, verse 14. If my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. You know, this was God's answer to Solomon's prayer. But over this, these months, I've read that verse, those verses, and I've thought that is the prayer that should be for us. You know, our families, our church families, our communities, our nation globally, God is calling us to stand in the gap. There's no doubt about it, coronavirus has humbled everybody globally. We're all in this together, 
and we have lost control. We have no control really and we don't really know fully how it's going to come out. But in the passage it says, if my people will humble themselves and we have to choose to humble ourselves before God. And what does that mean? Well, it means acknowledge, Lord, you are the Lord of my life. You're the head of your church. You're in control. You're in the driving seat. I give you control. You know, it's amazing. I don't know about you, but no matter how I'm feeling, when I humble myself and I start worshipping God and focusing on God, everything just takes a different perspective. I'm not saying my problems disappear because they don't, but I start thinking about God and I'm reminded who he is and what he's done and what he promises and what he does. And then it causes me to think of others. Praying is like humility in action because we're basically admitting that we're inadequate, that I can't, but he can. And I love this quote. I read this and it says, our praying may seem weak. Words feel inadequate, but prayers yield far more fruit than the effort prayer demands. Our praying may seem weak, words feel inadequate, but prayers yield far more fruit than our praying effort in prayer demands. And as in Chronicles, as it says, to seek his face, that's really to desire something, to desire him, to desire Jesus and him more than anything else, to be in a place where he is our number one and that he is what we want more than anything. And as we come to that place in worship and desiring Jesus, we need to examine ourselves and be honest, be authentic. Give the Holy Spirit permission what is it that you want to change, Lord? What is it that has to die in me? What is it that I need to completely turn from? And as we, as we examine ourselves and allow the Holy Spirit to line our lives up with his word, what does it say? Then will I hear from heaven, forgive and heal our land. Then will I hear from heaven, you know, God's eyes and ears are open. He's listening and watching for those that are standing in the gap, whether it be praying, whether it's praying and being practical. He is waiting and just, I just believe he's leaning in, just desperate to see men and will, women who will take up that challenge at this time because then he will forgive and heal our land. God hears our prayers and he longs to respond and answer them. So this morning, are we standing in the gap? What is it God is asking of us? Where have maybe we've got a little bit despondent in that, that petition? What is it that God has asked us to do that maybe is out of our comfort zone? What is it that might cost us our time? What is it that God is saying? Is it serving, volunteering, giving, praying? Are we willing to leave our personal comfort zone, stay awake and stay alert and stand in the gap for our families, for the church, for our community here in Little Lever, for our town, for our nation. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that your eyes and ears are watching and waiting and looking for men and women who are prepared to stand in the gap for you.
And Lord, we, 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 we are sorry when we've, we maybe have started to pray for things and for people and we've maybe we've kind of just shelved it. But Lord, we want to be those defenders. We want to be those people who are crying out on behalf of our loved ones, on behalf of our friends and our neighbours, on behalf of our nation. And Lord, we think of the boy with the five loaves and two fish. And it might not have seemed much to him, it was just his picnic lunch, but we just recognise the miraculous when it's put into your hands. And Lord, we pray, Lord, as we offer ourselves to stand in the gap this morning, what is it practically that you're asking of us? How can we live out our love for you more? Lord, we pray that you will stir us out of our comfort zone. Stir us out of any sleep, Lord, to stay awake and to be vigilant, Lord, to see what you're doing. Thank you, Lord, that as we pray, that as we do what you say, that you do hear and you do forgive and you will heal our land. And so, Lord, we pray this morning, Lord, that you would stir us afresh. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah, thanks for that moment. I think for loads of us, there might be um, things there that have touched us and challenged us. Just want to encourage you, you can go back and you can watch these videos again. That's one of the great things about them. You can watch them at any point. You can skip along the bottom if you just want to listen to the talk or a certain part of it. Um, you know, it really is. Uh, you have the ability to kind of go back and listen to these things at any point. And uh, so if something's touched you or challenged you, or if there was just something you thought, oh, you really felt like God kind of impressed upon you during it, I just want to encourage you to, to kind of listen again, to spend some time with God this week, just kind of uh, bringing it before him, asking him what he would have you do with it and waiting on him. And, and you've got, low, you know, there is the space to do that. Um, and, you know, even in our current situation, if you if you want help or support by doing that, you can pick up the phone and text someone or ring someone and ask them to listen to you or pray with you over the phone. You know, one of the most incredible things about God is that it's he'll meet with us absolutely anywhere through any medium. Uh, often it's strange for us, but it's not weird for him. Uh, you know, he's with us in the midst of every situation yeah. and circumstance. So I just want to encourage you with that. Uh, we're going to move on to some notices before we finish our meeting together. And the first one of those is that on Wednesday coming up, we have our prayer meeting. And uh, it's the first meeting we're going to do physically together as a, a church family back at church, which is really, really exciting. Um, it, we had to obviously we've had to reduce the capacity to make it all safe and so it is absolutely sold out for Wednesday not that it costs anything um, but in the midst of that we just want to really encourage it. it's going to be great to see so many people there we've got all of the safety stuff in mind so just to remind you to bring your face covering and to arrive at 7 15 uh, for those that have booked on and we're gonna have a great time praying together and you know what Dave I think because we're at capacity point for this Wednesday evening, I think next month we're going to have to look at having two prayer meetings to accommodate more people because I know more people want to come along. And so we need to really look at that for next month. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. On or next Sunday, we will be breaking bread together and sharing in that service of communion or time of communion. And so have your bread and your juice or your wine in place for next Sunday so that we can break bread together all at the same time. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, and just kind of two more little things. One is um, we've mentioned about the Alpha course and if you're interested in being on Alpha or you've got friends that are interested on coming on Alpha, we just really want to know so we can kind of gather up that number and see how many people there are and what we can do to facilitate that. It's likely to run online. 
Um, but it's an amazing course, which is about exploring what faith is all about, exploring who Jesus is, um, exploring what it means to follow God. It's, there's no compulsion to it. You can just come and listen to the course, uh, discuss your ideas, ask your questions. And then, you know, that, that, that's the whole purpose of the course. Um, so if you'd like to do that, if you could email us on info at kingschurch-ll.co.uk. If you've got friends, church family who you know want to come on it, if you could email that and just let us know, then we can kind of gather up numbers. That'd be great. If you're interested in going on the Kickstart course, which is run by CAP, then if you could let John know, and so to let John know, it's prayer at kingschurch-ll.co.uk. It's a really practical course that will give us some really good like life skills and advice in this time, and it's open to anyone. Um, so if you want more information about that or you'd like to do that, then um, contact John Kell. So that'd be great. I'd, I just think as we finish this morning, I'd just love to pray for everybody as we uh, as we finish our time together. Lord, we just want to thank you for everybody that is watching this morning. Lord, we pray that you would bless them and keep them. Lord, we pray that you would make your face shine upon them. Lord, we pray that you would be gracious towards them. And Lord, we pray that whatever we face this week, we would experience your goodness and mercy running after us. Mm. Lord, we pray that we would uh, be aware of your presence in every situation. And God, we declare the peace of God that passes all understanding. We pray that that would just rest in our hearts and in our minds and in our homes this week. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So have a great week and we'll see you next week. Yeah, God bless you.